Hello, welcome to Straw Family Farm, take two. I'm Christy. Today in the chapel we have Psalms 34.4 and it is, I sought the Lord and he heard me and delivered me from all my fears. Um, I have some things going on that you'll find out about and just fearful, kind of, I uh, just don't know. <laughs> It'll be worked out. It'll be fine. I just got to have faith and sometimes that's hard. So, Moving on and totally hooked, uh, I don't have anything. Yeah, that's not a very good move on. All right, let's go to in the basket. I have this one that I'm working on. I still have this one that I'm working on, and I haven't done much on it. I'm not pushing to get it done because I plan on taking this with me on vacation to do. So, um, and I'm in the kitchen today for one of two reasons and the first is I thought I'd try and show you the different colors under this light um, so this is going to be the poncho for Krista with the fringe and I don't know how I'm going to do that yet uh, but it's I, I'm not really worried I've got all the yarn for it in the other room and I'm going to pack this and that with me to do while I'm on vacation because I, I can't go on vacation without crochet. I just can't. <laughs> I don't know. I've been known to take my spinning wheels on vacation. Yep. So, yeah. <laughs> it is what it is. So, um, yeah, I did that one. Then I started, um, you guys saw the kit that I got from Mary Maxim this time. And it was this, oops, Maypole DK Euro Baby. It was in the um, carnival way. But what I didn't read, and, and I guess it's just, it shocked me because I didn't ever think of this material as being soft and scrunchy. And this is, it's very soft. It's next to skin soft. It's scrunchy. It's wonderful. Um, and the thing that's shocking is it's 100% polyester. I'm a child of the 70s. Polyester, really? Okay, so everything has its purpose, and I know that. I've just never thought of polyester as being supple or scrunchy or soft. So, <clears throat> I looked at the pattern that came with these four balls of yarn, and I, the wrap is beautiful. I probably will make it with some other yarn that I already have set aside but it's not something I would keep for me because I wouldn't use it all very often um, as you guys know the virus shawl I have adapted it several times and made ponchos and and shawls and the whatnots and I'm actually and I feel selfish honestly I'm thinking I'm gonna keep this for me Oops, I dropped it I'm thinking I'm going to keep this for me. Yep, I said it twice. So I am working on this, and this is as far as I've gotten. And yeah, the colors show up pretty nicely in here. Um, it's a lot of color, but it's all muted or earth tone. I think they call them jewel tones. I'm not real sure. This is what I have left of the second skein. I just dropped it on the floor so now it looks like yarn barf but um so i am going to use all four balls and make it a long poncho and i'm going to keep it for myself the only thing that i can say and it's the only thing that i'm worried about um and that is when i seam it up because this is so colorful um it i've done these in solids and like striped so it matched but this time when i seam it up it will have different colors let me get that burgundy color out of there it's going to have different colors where you seam it so i don't know how the seam is going to look but honestly i don't care it's for me and here's the thing is I can always put it to the side or something I, I don't know so I like this 
I haven't woven in the ends. Um, there are a couple of things with this yarn, and I'll show you. I have found that they actually have knotted some of the colors together. Okay, so I just crochet around them. But this is going to be hidden. I didn't worry about hiding this one because I want to be able to show you guys. Oops, I need to raise that up. Um, they knot them. So the standard in the industry is you can have three knots to a skein before it's considered a knotted skein. Um, I have not found more than three in any one skein, so technically they're not knotted. But you can see that these two colors have been knotted together. This is going to be hidden under a seam, so I didn't mind it showing. The others are worked in and hidden very well. Um, what I did was I, you know, they knot them really short and because I'm not worried about yardage, <coughs> oh, excuse me, my allergies, ragweed is crazy. So, um, what I did was I actually lengthened and split the knot. So I, I would take, let me see if I can show you, let me find the other end of this yarn here. Mm, there it is. Okay. So I took, pretend there's another one here. And, that, and there is a knot there, which I just put in it. Um, so instead of having a short knot like they do um, in the industry, you know, to make yardage or whatever. I'll get that out in a minute. I took it and like the knot was way up here. There. The knot was like way up here. So I tied the knot back and then cut it and then folded these separately and crocheted with them as if I would have joined it with my little loopy thing that I do to join it. And that hid the seams or the knots. So um, I did do that just to make it look a little bit more. And this one, like I said, was where I'm going to be seaming up. So I left it so you guys could see that some of it is knotted. Um, it's okay. I mean, you can always work around a knot. I prefer not to have a knot because of the way I fold it over. And I'll have to do a video on that, on how I join yarn. Um, because it's super easy and you don't have to weave in ends. That's what I like. So, anyway, you can't find the other ends because they're all worked in. Which I'm okay with that. Except for, this is the start. <laughs> this is the, the first end. And it actually goes all the way across there. I need, need to clip it off. And I have it. So this, I am going to make a poncho out of it. And I'm honestly thinking I'm going to keep it for me. So I've enjoyed working on this one. Today, I won't be working on this one. And I'll tell you why. Um, the next thing, I, I almost got caught the other day working on roommate's uh, sweater vest or sweater I, if I have enough yarn again you guys have heard this before if I have enough yarn I'm going to put some sleeves on it if I don't it's going to be a vest it can go in over a, a long sleeve t-shirt it can do anything so I've been working on this and I plan on working on it even more today and I don't have any running to do I'm doing laundry and just cleaning around the house so um, yeah this is where I was measuring and my measurements. You guys have seen this. And I've taken, I compared two other shirts. So, yeah. And there's the back. Here's the front. I've taken different measurements, scribbled some more on this. Um, I haven't changed a whole lot. I haven't started decreasing or increasing. Okay, so I've got this much on the side with the um without the button oh no with the buttonholes this is the one with the buttonholes so it's a little bit longer to overlap so i don't lose inches um this one and i've gotten further on this one than i have and this is a side without the buttonholes oh i just pulled a stitch late that's all right that's all right i gotta go back and put one stitch in there so I've got this one going, and yes, I'm doing them all at the same time so that they all match. And then I haven't really started. I still am just this far in with the uh, 
color or with the back. Um, but my plan is to work on nothing but I've got laundry to do, but it's already going. I'm not going anywhere today. Um, it's a cooler day. I like these kind of days, so I'm going to sit and do this. Uh, and I'm going to work on it and get further than I am. So I have to have it done by Christmas. Um, last year, I didn't get roommate's Christmas present done until January. So I plan on not doing that again. So those are the three things that I have uh, going at the time. Today, I'm only going to work on the green and I should have I'm hoping to have it almost done um, for the next podcast. I'm not saying it's going to happen, but today I am literally just going to sit, crochet, turn on the TV, and that's all I'm going to work on is that. Um, I've already got my bed done. I've got laundry going. I just had two loads, and the first load was mostly worms, uh, blankets, because he still has accidents at night. So I've got that going. Um, the little bit of dishes are done, so, and I've got my coffee. <laughs> but, yeah, that's what I plan on doing is this one. So, hopefully, next week, if you're following on that one, there should be another um, blog post, which you can find down in the description. There's only one post up there because right now I'm going to try and put that on there. Uh, I thought about putting how to do the virus shawl into a poncho on there. But I don't know. I, I don't know if I want to keep all that sweater boom, 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 boom. Or if I want to put the other things that I'm in there. You know, it is what it is. So, anyway, don't know how all that's going to go. But I do plan on taking some pictures when I get to the 18. And then I'm going to start the decreases. And like I said, while we're on vacation, I'm hoping to find some cute little buttons that maybe roommate and I picked out together. I know it sounds corny, but that way it's personalized for roommate by roommate without roommate knowing it. I don't know. Anyway, so those are the things I've got working on. I don't have anything in the pots. On the wheel, I'm still, I played with sorting the wool that um, Worm got into, <sighs> but I didn't do enough to worry about it not to put it on here so in the fields of course it's um fall not a whole lot going on um rj's world so yesterday was rj's birthday it was the first birthday and this is another thing you know letting go it's the first birthday i haven't actually laid eyes on my son or done something with my son um i had to work till late and by the time i got off he had gone to spend some time with his girlfriend and she had taken him out to dinner and I normally take him out to dinner or something on his birthday always and even he texts me because I was feeling really bad about it and he texts me and says I know it's kind of weird and I told him it's bittersweet I'm glad that he had someone to make his birthday special but wanted it to be me so yeah it was tough to take um, I know kids grow up. He's all grown up. He's a big boy. <sighs> Just stabs me in the heart, though. So, yeah. He's been rodeoing and doing his thing. And I did see him last week. And Jethro, so we'll go on into the farmhouse. Because I guess this is kind of a uh, RJ's World plus farmhouse, whatever. Um, so Jethro was the dog that was sick last week. Um, and I say sick. He wasn't eating right. He wasn't acting right. He just didn't feel well. So I took him down some medications, some warmer, some, you know, spent some time with Jethro, got him pepped up, got him eating. Um, and RJ said he did a total turnaround within 24 hours he was back to being himself he was um eating excited to get you know so he's getting canned food i have a um some canned food in the back of the car that i need to take there but i'm not doing it today i'll do it this weekend or 
Thursday when I take Hitch and drop him off next Thursday. So, um, yeah, he's doing better. And Jethro, he's a pound puppy. I got him way back when I worked at the shelter. And he, RJ and I started figuring it out and he is around 10 years old, um, nine or 10. And man, where did time go? <laughs> he is getting older and he is a huge dog and larger dogs normally have a lifespan of about 10 to 12 years. Um, Rebel lasted, I think nine and a half, but he had hip dysplasia and we had to, um, put him to rest um, because he couldn't stand up. He couldn't get, we were unaware when we got him. Now, when I got Jethro, I took him and had him x-rayed and we did it every year and he showed no signs for the first three years of hip dysplasia. Hip dysplasia is where the hips move because they're big dogs and their hips shift because of the way they walk. Um, and so once their hips get really bad, it's either surgery and by the time it gets really bad, it's normally an older dog and older dogs have a tendency not to make it through surgery. So yeah, that's what happened with Rebel. And I learned from that experience. And when I had Jethro and realized he was going to be huge, I started with our vet and took x-rays for the first three or four years of his life. I can't remember, but they x-rayed his hips and his hips had not moved, hadn't shifted and showed no signs of hip dysplasia. So he should live longer. Um, what I didn't realize was time was getting away from me and he's getting up in years now. So living longer is coming to an end. You know, he has lived a long life and he's had a happy life from where he started. So, but he's back on track. RJ said he did a total 180 after I was there, gave him his medicine, loved on him, you know, just, it is what it is. And so he's back to his perky self. We are giving him extra calories to kind of get his weight back up because apparently he had pretty much just been nibbling, not really eating a meal. Um, so I have canned food that I'm going to take up to the farm, not today, but I'm going to take it up there next time I go. And that way he's got ample food for the dog. Um, it'll be fine. It'll be fine. But it's a forewarning that, you know, life is precious. And yes, he's had a long life, but I'm not ready for him to go. And I've actually contemplated bringing him here with me. But Great Pyrenees roam. And he has had... 40 acres to roam and he roams our neighbor's pasture with the neighbor's permission. So he's had that 80 acres of the neighbors that he's allowed to roam, the 40 acres of us that he's allowed to roam. So he's had, you know, 120 acres to roam. If I was to bring him here, we live right on the highway. He can't even roam the whole seven acres. Um, he can only roam the yard and he's not an indoor dog. He doesn't want to be inside. He doesn't want anything to do with being inside. Um, he loves the cold. Uh, now in the heat, he'd come in and lay on the concrete floor. So he's okay with that, but he wouldn't stay long. It's almost like he'd cool off and then go back outside. Uh, he had his spots in the barn and that's where he preferred to be. And he's never wanted to be inside. And when we first got him, we tried kenneling him and stuff. And he didn't do well with that either. So, yeah, he's an outdoor dog and he doesn't want to be inside. So, I don't think I can bring him here. And there's just not, not enough room for him to roam. Um, I'm afraid he'd get hit on the highway. Especially since he doesn't move very fast. And him learning his boundaries would include having to train him to stay off that highway. That's a lot for an older dog and I just don't think it'd be a good adjustment for him. So we're not going to do that. Now there are some other things that I've been working on in the house and I have a dilemma. And so I am going to uh, 
I've got two clips and I will put them in right here. Okay. Okay, so just to show you what I've been kind of working on and the dilemma I have. Um, so I painted some of the trims. This is just painted with the light gray that we used in the living room. But if you see, so the cabinet, this goes right up to the cabinet. Okay, but up here, I don't know if you can actually see it, to be honest with you. Oh, there. Um, see how that's been painted dark gray? The problem is, is they painted over trim, uh, not trim. It's like a space between the cabinet and the thing. And I tried peeling it off right here, and it's paneling behind it. So, I think it should be painted light gray, too. See, they painted up in there and just painted over, I think it's contact paper but I don't know what I'm gonna do about that then if you follow me over here and don't don't look at the destroyed dog toys um, I also painted this trim which was light gray and this doesn't have the trim up against it yet so when the trim is there it'll do and again I ran into a small little problem this piece of trim is crooked and actually shows more when it goes up like this it goes away and looks perfect and the other side does not do it it's like even all the way down so I'm thinking I probably need to paint that even though I don't want to paint the paneling it would be the edge of the paneling that's up there or I have to take that piece of trim down and straighten it which then I run the chance of breaking the piece of trim the last thing that I painted was the inside of this windowsill. It was dark gray, and we tried to um, sand it all off, and it took literally hours just to get this piece. So I decided I'd just paint the inside of that light gray, too. And the good thing about it is when you sit back, you can't tell it's painted gray. I mean, it doesn't... Let me turn on the light, and it still won't stick out like a sore thumb or anything. Um, I know it's dark in this corner, but you can see the trim is there. See? And it really doesn't look all that bad. I kind of like it. So, that's what I've been doing around the house. Um, those things and then cleaning, of course. The other thing that I did in the house is I put this together. It was sitting here. This, this bottom part was sitting here. The top part, the mirror was down behind it. And so I put it all together. And I hooked up a charging station for ooh, let it focus for all of our toothbrushes and stuff. The this is in the office, and it's right off this little bathroom right here. And so we kept our toothbrushes and stuff, and we had it all over here on this, and that was a mess. So um, it has one of those six things, but it was really overloaded because as you can see. <laughs> I have four already in this one, <laughs> so yeah, um, but it's just the two toothbrushes and the water pick, and then whatever we need to charge. This is actually charged, so I can unplug it, but um, we have a bunch of headphones and sound muffling stuff, and I thought we could charge it in here. This has got a good space, um, and finally, I decorated for fall. Yeah, just a little bit in here, little door things. Um, put a thing on roommate's door there. Just little set around stuff, little pumpkins. My little shelf sitters are back up. Um, if you followed us at the farm, you know that I had those everywhere. Um, and then, of course, I've got the most decorating that I did was down here. In the den, this is where we spend most of our time when we are at home. <laughs> There's Hitch underneath the table. And Worm is over on his blankie. Yes. But I decorated this for fall. Um, I tend to do more down here than anything. So, just little things set around. Little pumpkins and that. But other than that, um, I've been working on the kitchen stuff. And I'll show you that in a minute. Okay, so the office stuff was just having to find a way to have our toothbrushes and everything charging. I, I needed a charging station. 
and I've got the laptop I charge. I've got our phones that I, we charge. Um, and we charge our phones mostly in by the beds. So, I mean, that's not really an issue. But then we've got all those headphones. Um, we've got some for mowing that cover, and we play our Bluetooth in them. So they all have to be charged. And I think we've got three or four sets of those. Um, I keep one charged at all times. And as a matter of fact, I don't think, the one that was in the video is roommates. And I don't think mine are charged. Oh, oh well. Um, so anyway, I did that and that was not really a big thing. The biggest thing was getting the mirror up there by myself. Ooh, I did that Tuesday. And so, yeah, um, roommate was at work and I thought I'm just going to do it. We had talked about it. I do need a, one of those. I need a plug-in thing that has the plug-in that goes into the wall that lays flat so I can move that back a little bit and it doesn't look so cattywampus, uh, the dresser. But other than that, it's pretty much done. And I moved the picture that was on that wall over to the other side. I decorated for fall. Pretty proud of myself for that. Um, and then in the kitchen, I had that one space that I don't know what I'm going to do with. Um, roommate doesn't know what to do. We looked at it and I had peeled off that one corner you know, and that's paneling back there and I don't want to paint paneling but <laughs> I don't know I think somebody else has not decided what didn't really decide what should be done with it either because if you look you can see the flowery type contact paper and then you can see the painted part and that we haven't changed that is exactly the way it was when we moved into this house so I'm pretty sure it, I'm not the first to have this dilemma. <laughs> so I want your thoughts on it. Leave me a comment or email me, you know, whatever. And I don't know. I don't know. Um, so, and the trim, I'm just scared of breaking. If I move it, pop it off of there, that's great if it'll come off in one piece because then I can just adjust it, put it back, right? But I'm not sure it's been there so long that I, I don't know that I can get it off without breaking it. So, and the other thing that I didn't show, um, I did it after I did the video. Um, this window was missing a piece of trim across the bottom. So I cut it and made the piece of trim. Um, it had gotten, when we removed the trim here, it had gotten broke. It was, we think it was broke before, but it came off in two pieces and we were gonna sand it down and put it back up. Well, I took a piece of the old trim that was broke on one end and I cut a piece and made it I don't know. Let me see if I can let me do it right here. Uh, uh, yeah, that window is not there. You kind of can see it, but the window is there. There we go. As long as you don't mind my, looking at my hand. So I put that piece of trim up too, but that's not really a big deal to me. So, I mean, I literally measured, made two cuts, put it up there two nails I didn't even yeah so uh just little things um and I did those like on Tuesday this week just to get things finished up you know how you start something and then you're like I just have the little details to do I wanted to get those little details done so that when we come back from vacation we don't oh I don't want our list to be this long of stuff and we we it is So, speaking of vacation, if you followed us very long, you know that um, every two years we go down to Branson. Um, I'm the glue, I guess you'd call it, and I go, and my kids come down. Sometimes the same days, sometimes they overlap, sometimes not, you know, but one day, some come two days, but it is my time to decompress and have you know, solid day where I focus on my kids. That's it. So roommate has said that because I don't know if RJ is going to get to come down. He's still working on it. He said, maybe I can get up early in the morning and drive down for the day and then drive home. Maybe stay the night and drive home the ne early the next morning. Um, he just doesn't know at this point. Um, 
it's the nature of his work that he does. You know, he's got outside horses to ride. He's got chores to do daily. So fitting those chores in, can he turn everything out? Does he have one that's, you know, are, are the owners coming that day? Can he schedule around it? You know, the owners come to see the horses at different stages. Um, it It is what it is. So it, it's killing me because it's happening on the same year that I didn't spend time with RJ for his birthday. And that was bittersweet. So I know he's 25, but if you followed us, you know, RJ was never supposed to make it past, I think age three, the first time we were told because his lungs had so much damage, you know, just, didn't know he was on so many medications he used to take he turned six months old living in an oxygen tent he we celebrated when he could make it 20 minutes out of the oxygen tent without having to be on oxygen um he even when we did get him home he had to do four and five sometimes six breathing treatments a day and that was daily and the four a day was preventive and if he had no problems with his lungs um then he only had to do them four times a day but if he had problems or something you know triggered his asthma it was more times um so yeah he had a lot of medical issues and, and i know that i don't put this out there a whole lot but RJ was supposed to be a twin. There was two and one didn't make it. So he's a twinless twin. And um, the other one died in, in utero. I never, I mean, I, we were prepared, pre preparing for twins. We knew that I was going to have twins. And that was short-lived for about three months. Because by the second trimester, I had lost one. So I was put on bed rest. Um, it was a big ordeal, and I always tell everybody that RJ's my miracle. I was told I'd never have kids again after my daughter, and that's why there's 10 years in between them. So he is my miracle baby, and maybe that's why I'm so attached to him, because <laughs> he was never supposed to be, you know? And I know, he's 25, he's growing up, but it's hard. I got him this far. I know that sounds very conceited and, and that, but I did everything above and beyond. I was the crazy mom, very protective of our son, very strict with schools. And when the schools didn't do what I wanted um, for his health and all of that, um, we pulled him out and homeschooled him, which he loved that. <laughs> um, but I did try to keep him in mainstream school but they don't, they can't curtsy to the need of one. It's that simple. Um, I say that lovingly. They, they do their best and there are good success stories that come out of public school. There is, you know, great programs in public school, but for a child who has so many health issues they can't curtsy to his every need and um one of the things that just to give you an example one of the things is, is that when he was younger he was on a lot of steroids it made him super hungry all the time but you can't eat in class because everybody else can't eat in class well he can't concentrate in class if his stomach is growling so loud that the other kids can hear it and it's hurting him. So he always had a snack with him. 24 seven, he had something with him. Uh, it wasn't always nutritious, okay? I'm not gonna say that. I'm saying he had something to trickle down through his system so that his body was always having food to process. Sometimes it'd be grapes, okay? Sometimes it would be Cheez-Its, but he always had a Ziploc bag. and they would not allow him to eat in school and it created problems. They didn't understand that he took so much medication that 
his body needed nutrition constantly. It needed something so that his stomach wasn't hurting and all that. I can't tell you the days that he'd come home and just be crying upset that his stomach hurt. His stomach hurt. When's the last time you ate? Well, they wouldn't let me eat because we had this going on. He needed that. He used to carry a fanny pack with him that had his inhaler and his um, breathing chamber in it and a snack always. And it, it wasn't like he sat there and ate. He'd take one out and put it in his mouth and just eat, you know, just so it trickled down through. And that was one of the biggest fights. The other thing is when they thought he should go out to recess. Well, okay, I get that when it is lower than this, they don't go out to recess. And if it's higher than that, they do go out. Well, RJ couldn't breathe in certain temperatures. Regardless of what their rules were, they wanted him to go out. There was nobody in the classroom to watch him and blah, blah, blah. Well, he couldn't breathe outside. And they needed to have some play, you know, and their only thing was, well, we can just put him in detention. So you're punishing a kid for his health. You can't just put him in detention. So as things got worse, we pulled him out and homeschooled him. So he did go to elementary school until we figured out that they just couldn't. It, it, it's too much. And so, yeah, that I, I still need those days. So we still go to Branson. <laughs> and honestly, if I was to pass, knock on wood, hopefully nothing, you know, um, I don't think my children would do it. I don't think they would go on vacation. I don't think that they would, you know, any of that stuff. Um, they probably wouldn't have any interest, but they go for me and let me have time with them. So while I'm having those growing pains of letting go of RJ, um, I'm okay with it. I know it has to happen, but I still want my vacation. I want him to come. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I'm being whiny. So, um, but roommate's going to go with me, so I'm not by myself. Um, my daughter is coming down. Uh, she'll be there two days, I think. And RJ will be down when he can, if he can. So, it's not a bad thing. But I also had some other things. And it's, it's going to be a pretty skimpy vacation. We're going to just, um, we play board games. We hang out. We just have no responsibilities other than that. We cook, whatever. Um, it, it's a, a two apartments put together. One's a smaller apartment. It's like a little mini apartment. And then um, we've got the big apartment that's got the big bedroom and the big open living area. Um, last time we went, I think it was a cabin, which is great. So... Uh, anyway, they have adjoining doors and we can shut the door between it and, you know, but anyway, so Sunday I was eating dinner and it, they said it probably was already cracked, but I have a filling back here that I had done and somehow it chipped the filling when I was eating and I could feel something was just off. So I ended up going to the dentist. Now, you know that I changed jobs, which means my insurance changed. So when I called my dentist, they don't take that insurance. So I had to find a new dentist. I don't like that. I don't like it at all. So I went to the new dentist. Um, I got it fixed, but of course they had to do the x-rays and cleaning before they would even touch the tooth. Yeah. Um, I think they do all the stuff that the insurance will pay for before they'll do, you know, because that way they're assured to get something. So, yeah. Before they say, okay, now you get to pay these hundreds of dollars and have your tooth fixed. So, but it's fixed. Um, they did say that it's going to need a crown. So, it's a temporary filling um, because when the filling broke, it took a little chunk of the tooth too but your teeth are not very big so when it takes a little chunk so they said that it really needs a crown so the temporary fillings in there for about two weeks or so 
and it's going to get me so I can go on vacation uh, and get me back. They said, just take it easy on it, you know. So I've been chewing more on this side than this side. <laughs> on the upside, though, um, they did find that I had lost a filling. I knew that this up here kind of was gapping a little bit. And I thought, man, I can't have another cavity there. I have, you know, it's a filling. Apparently part of the filling on that side had fallen out too. Um, and I will say this, when I was young and they used metal fillings, I still have on this side, on the bottom, I have a metal filling and it's been there. My other dentist was taking them out and redoing them because they said that, you know, it has a lead in it. Okay. Probably don't need that in my mouth, but they lasted forever. I've never had one of those turn loose or break or anything. <laughs> so, <laughs> um, should I have metal in my mouth? It lasts a long time. Probably shouldn't. But, hence, in two years, I have cracked or chipped two fillings that I had that were just a couple years old. So, I don't know. I, I don't know why. But it is what it is. And, of course, that goes back to the fears. Um, financially, I'm trying to go on vacation. Um, I'm still feeling the crunch of the 1500 to get RJ back from Kansas. Uh, yeah, I've got it paid, but I took money from other bills to pay it. Now I'm trying to catch those bills up. Uh, can I really afford to go on vacation? We can afford to do. I've already paid for the accommodations. I'm going to lose that money if I don't use it. So, uh, it is what it is. And we can pack food. We're going to take a cooler. We're going to go, roommate and I are going grocery shopping this week. That's one thing I do have to do um, today is make a grocery list. We're going to have tacos. We're going to make a menu. We're going to do the grocery shopping. And we're going to do it, you know, as cheaply as possible. And the one thing that I have noticed is Branson, even their Walmart, is higher than our Walmart. So I am going to do the grocery shopping here, take everything that we need for our menu with us. It doesn't mean we won't eat out. We have decided that we'll eat out probably three times and those places will be amazing food. It's not going to be fast food. We're not hopping to McDonald's or whatever. Um, we're going to find some really decent restaurants and have some amazing food. Um, and then of course we'll cook the rest of the time. Um, with the kids, we're going to go and do some free stuff. There's the university there, the hatchery. Um, my daughter has just switched jobs, so she is on a budget. So I told her, I said, let's go. And she's never been to the hatchery as an adult. She went as a kid, and her other half has never been. So we're going to go down there and do the hatchery and that kind of stuff, and then go over to the college. We'll do the free stuff when she's there and that. And RJ, he just likes to walk and do the uh, landing and look at the stuff in there. And then he likes to look at the knickknack shops. So those are things that we can do that won't cost us anything. And we plan on doing it on a budget, a very tight budget. So <laughs> anyway, all those little fears, mostly financial, um, I did take and I I talked about my girlfriend that was having some issues and, and having a really tough time right now and I gave her a prayer shawl. Now she's not religious so I told her to look at it this way. Um, I actually had made it for her for Christmas so it the colors were perfect for her but it had like little pink glitzy in it. It was one of the shawls that you guys have seen on the other. Anyway, so I gave it to her and I said, you know, I know you're not religious. I know that you don't, aren't comfortable talking about that subject. I said, it is a prayer shawl. I told them how they used to use them in the old West, you know, um, but I told her when you're upset, down, lonely, I said, you put that thing around you. And I said, it's a big old hug from all of us up here, you know, at the office. And she was almost in tears. And she said, I need that. And I said, it's a physical hug from all of us every time you wrap up in it. So, prayer shawl, hug shawl, 
same thing. It, God is love, right? So a hug is what a prayer shawl should do, you know? So anyway, I think that is <clears throat> all my news, all my update. Today I am working on the green. That's why I'm in the kitchen. The other, the second reason I'm in the kitchen is that, you know, the first was so that maybe the light would show the colors a little bit differently. But the second was because this is where I lay out and crochet on that green thing. And I'm going to spend all day today trying to get that at somewhere looking like a vest or a sweater, depending on how much yarn I have. <laughs> so, and I've even come to the conclusion if I'm a little short, I'm going to, I've got that other that I have hand spun. I'm going to ply it up and make enough and I'm just going to dye it the black gray color and that's what I'm going to seam it up with if I run short. So I have a plan. Um, don't know that I will be able to get it perfectly dyed with the green and the black. I don't know. So I'm not too worried about sleeves. It can be a sweater vest, but if I need the seam up stuff, I got that covered. Uh, I've got it. So, all right, you guys, thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe. Um, this doesn't make me a whole lot of money and I don't get any of it until it reaches a certain amount. So I appreciate you watching and, and just following along and hopefully it'll supplement my income a little bit at some point. It's not right now. <laughs> I'm trying. I'm trying. And I'm also thinking I'm going to go back to consignment crochet, but we'll see. I might put that on the web page as a way to bring in income. I, I don't know. Um, of course, I enjoy that more, so that would be a great job, right? Just don't know that I can make enough at it to get me where I need to be right now. So, um, all right, I'm off of here. You guys have a blessed week, and I will talk to you next week. The following week, there will be no podcast because I'll be on vacation. Talk to y'all later. Bye.